purpose of locks and lines is to make you more aware of the hazards involved in handling lines and to help you do your job safely. My job, the master of a river tow. It takes a long time and a lot of work to get there. Lots of responsibility comes with the job. The safety of my deckhands is at the top of the list. I don't want my crew losing fingers, legs, or their lives. They've got to know the risks in this business and how to avoid them. I must also protect my tow and cargo. Lock coming up. We'll have help getting through. We depend on the lock crew. The tow will not approach the lock while the red light is flashing, but must stand off until given the green light. Many accidents occur when the signal lights are ignored, causing extensive damage to the lock structures and to the tows. If the damage is severe, the lock may be put out of commission, halting navigation at that point. This is very expensive, the lock masters and I will talk about river conditions as I make my way up or downstream. Some lock masters have been around as long as anyone on the river. Got a little rain in the north, and uh, we had to pull a dam out the other day, but uh, we got a little outdraft down that lower end. Uh, you're going to have to watch it. It's kind of a updraft connected with the outdraft. Oh, uh, yeah, Cap, I appreciate that invitation. I might just take you up on it, so I'll clear away you and uh, just be locked when you clear. Preparing for lockage. Now comes the time when we all function as a team. The lock crew, the mate, and myself. Slow headway. They still got the gates closed here, Cap. Established procedures must be followed. To do that, we must maintain good communication. 250 feet below, real slow headway now. I depend on the mate to sing out speed and distances for me so I can line up and come in properly. You're about you know, most of our problems in locking are a result of misalignment and improper speed. 250 feet below. 20 feet open. The lock crew must prepare the lock and give me clearance to enter. 50 feet up the long walk. Four feet open on the head. Two feet open on the head, two on the stern. One foot on the head, head's gonna land first. Half a foot. Head's on, stern's off one foot, headway's at a slow walk. Head's off six inches, stern's about seven feet now, 30 feet. Take her back a little bit there, Captain. Five more feet to the peg. Wrapping you up. You still got some swing. Got a tight line. The newer synthetic lines are tough and strong. We need lines that are strong, flexible, and easy to handle. But when those synthetic lines break, I want to be on the other side of the river. They snap fast and hard like a big rubber band. But the accident happened about three o'clock in the afternoon. The weather condition was fair, and it was a routine uh, double locking. And as we pulled the first section or cut out, as the uh, nine barges cleared the lower gate, I heard an explosion. Sound like a 12-gauge shotgun going off. I realized it was a line party. Kenny, what happened? I had put a line on the peg for the man to stop the uh, first cut, and then I backed out of the line of sight which we normally do, and uh, stay clear of the line in case it did part. And uh, the next thing I knew, I heard an explosion, as you spoke of, and I knew that a line had parted. So my next move was to see what I could do to give him another line and get the barge to stop. Well, as I looked over, well, he was laying on the deck, and I knew that he'd been injured. Well, then we called the uh, doctor, and he immediately went down on the toe, 
and examined the deckhand who was lying there in a pool of blood with his shoes off. The blow had struck him on the head and knocked him completely out of his shoes. He, he was lying there uh, with his head in a pool of blood, and the doctor says he's dead. As our tow approaches the lock, teamwork is in gear. They don't just wave you through. No, sir, we have to work together. gates are open and completely recessed. That's when I get the green light to come on in, and not before. Lock personnel are careful to watch the lights and mechanical indicators to make the necessary adjustments. Here again, safety is the name of the game. You're all killed out. We're holding on. From the bulldoze. Uh, 100 feet. 100 above the bulldoze. Hold her, Pat. Don't give him any. Give him a hard strain on the line. Put another one on that. Hold him. Get back. Get a hell of a strain, Cap. Get back. They're back. They're back up, boy. Kids are coming in a little now. Now we prepare to break toe. The first cut. About 85 to the bullnose. A deckhand's tools are essential. But if misused, watch out. Inspect the rigging regularly. Proper maintenance will prevent accidents. Two feet off on the head. Watch the bumper over there. Going by the shear on the bull nose now. Two feet off on the head. You're all inside. Halfway down on the gates. Four and a half feet off. Protect your hands with good quality leather gloves. And don't fall in love with a comfortable old pair. When they're worn out, throw them out. Your gloves will help prevent injured fingers or hands from broken strands and wires. They'll also help prevent rope burns. Never put a wire or line on a timber head with your hands in the bite. Watch your feet as you move across the barges. Lines and wires are potential tripping hazards. Watch the cigarettes. Smoking is prohibited while in the lock chamber. Never check with a double line. Your chance of injury is greatly increased. If you're on the lock wall, there may be a chain link fence. Stay behind it. It will help prevent serious injury from a breaking line. is pulled from the chamber with the haulage cable. Keep your hand out of the bite of the line. Don't look over the side if the cable is caught. And remember, the cable could part when pulled taut. Line handling is a big part of the job. Safe line handling comes only with training and experience. A 
avoid stepping on lines. Step over them whether they're in use or not. Always have respect for lines. I heard another captain talking recently on the radio about an incident with lines that he observed. My first cousin, a line broke. Uh, I believe it was at a lock. And this line broke and uh, oh, it just tore his leg all to pieces from his knee down. So they rushed him to the hospital and they had to amputate his leg. They tried every way to save it, but they just couldn't do it. It tore up so bad and... Uh, so they had to amputate it about an inch below the knee. I believe he was standing something like this. They got those dummies set at a lock. Uh, this boy that fouled the line down on the barge, and I believe he was standing on the lock wall, and that's where the line got him. He's a young boy, 20, uh, 21 years old, I guess. <laughs> We'll be easing out of the chamber now. Again, I'll be depending on my mate to give the right information. Let your head fall over the starboard about two foot, Captain. It's falling over against the wall. You need to be over about two foot. I got a line on the start of the wall. I should pull it out of the wall. You know where to pull Yeah, all right. Communications is one of the biggest safety factors on the river. Sing out when there's something to be said. When you see a bump coming, say so. See trouble? Shout it out loud and clear. Man overboard. If he's on my toe, he'll be wearing a work vest. That should help save his life. A work vest is a must. It must be worn at all times on the barge. Have a snug fit and be sure it's hooked top and bottom. Otherwise, it will come off and serve no purpose. Another life-saving feature maintained by the core at its locks is a safety block. If thrown into the water between the toe and the lock wall, it will prevent a man from being crushed. Safety blocks are located at the chamber and on the wing wall. Foot notch over here. She's, she's falling over now. Turn that over. Completely over. This thing. Lay it over there. Where are you going to tighten it to? Right here? Remember safety precautions, like staying inboard while tightening ratchets. You won't find yourself in the river if the cheater slips. Protect your backs by getting help to move the big levels. Use your leg muscles to lift the ratchet and other heavy rigging. Start tightening this and that. Make sure your cheater bar is the right size. Don't leave it on the ratchet or use it instead of a sledge. Protect your feet with safety shoes. I hate to think how many men have smashed their toes while wearing soft shoes. Proper clothing for weather and working conditions is important. Above all, remember, here on the river, we don't want you hurt. We don't want you hurting anyone else by making careless mistakes. There's a spirit of teamwork out here. We've all got an important job to do, and we're going to see it through safely. <laughs>